Hello everyone, this is Ram Govinda Sami, Chief Engineer from Dieselship. In this video, we will see the operation of 4 ram electro hydraulic steering gear. Let us assume steering unit number 1 is online and unit number 2 is on standby. Let's move into the next slide. Here on the screen, you see the schematic drawing of a 4 ram electro hydraulic steering gear incorporating two distinct power units. This is required as per SOLAS. So let us assume this one here is number one unit and this one here is number two unit. As the name implies, this is a four ram hydraulic steering gear. You can see here there are four rams incorporated into these cylinders one, two, three and four. And close to these cylinders, you see a relief valve. In other ways, it, it's called as a shock valve. Relief valve or a shock valve is used to release excess pressure on the hydraulic system that may be created due to an external force acting on the rudder. According to SOLAS, the pressure setting of this valve should not be less than 1.5 times the working pressure. You should remember this because the examiners in oral exams are very keen to find this out from you. You should know it is not 1.5% of the working pressure, but it is 1.5 times the working pressure. <clears throat> well, the next critical parts of this system is a bypass valve. Let me circle it for you. These are the bypass valves. Bypass valves are used to bypass the hydraulic circuit between the two cylinders. For example, let us assume unit number one has to be isolated due to a hydraulic leak and unit number two is in operation. However, you can still see the rudder stock is still connected to these two cylinders and imagine this valve were to be closed, there will be a hydraulic locking and the rudder stock will not move. For this reason, bypass valves are usually opened. They are, actually, they are normally open type valves until there is a pressure from the servo pump that will aid it to close. Okay, next we are going to talk about the automatic isolation valves. These three here you see are automatic isolation valves. These are electrically operated valves. Basically they are used to separate the system into two or connect both the system into one. For example, now they are opened. Now one pump, one unit can run these two cylinders and also these two cylinders, yeah, vice versa, this can also do the same. If this valve were to be closed, then this steering system will operate into two distinct systems. This will be operated by this unit and this will be operated by this unit. Let me clear that for you. So that is automatic isolation valve which are electrically operated. Whenever the steering unit is switched on, these are the first valves to be opened. If you switch on both the pumps, then this valve will remain closed. Okay, the next valve is the bidirectional control valve. The bidirectional control valve you, you see here is a mere hydraulic valve with ports to connect the hydraulic lines into different sections. They have ports uh, according to their movement, they will, the hydraulic lines are connected into different positions. We will see it in operation when we go to the next slides. And the next, let us see the pumping units. These are the pumping unit. There's an electric motor, main pump and a servo pump. And there is a hydraulic reservoir with three float switches, high, high, low and low, low. Well, let's get into the operation of this unit. Let me start the electric motor. As you can see, the electric motor is started and the main pump and the servo pump are running which is connected to the electric motor on the same shaft. Now let us see what happens on the main pump. As you can see the red arrows, they are, the, the, the hydraulic oil is being sucked from the reservoir, goes to the bidirectional valve which is in zero displacement position, no displacement position, what, however your manufacturer calls it but it is in zero displacement position right now. So the oil returns back to the reservoir. Remember, some of the ships, some of the units I've seen, the oil just doesn't return back. It has to be cooled, otherwise it gets overheated in a long run. 
So on the return line, there is also a cooler which I have not shown it here on the screen, on this diagram. Okay, let us see what happens to the servo pump. Servo pump takes suction from the reservoir and creates a pressure on the yellow line which is connected to bypass valve. Due to that pressure, the bypass valve is now open. Well, in this condition, it is called steering gear in idling mode, awaiting for rudder orders from the helm. Okay, now let us say, let us move the rudder to one side, say hot to port. Let me move the wheel to port side. The command is given to hot to port. Let's see what happens on the system okay the control box receives the signal and control box is going to send the signal to the bi-directional valve to move the rudder to port side therefore the bi-directional valve will move to the right hand side connecting the main pump to the hydraulic lines as you can see the green line is being pressurized which is connecting to cylinder 2 and cylinder 1 is releasing the pressure it is as you can see on the red lines, the oil is returning back. Similarly, cylinder 3 is being pressurized and cylinder 4 is returning oil on the purple line. Green lines are being pressurized and purple lines are returning the oil. Due to this pressure difference in the cylinders, let's see what happens. The rudder moves to port side. Okay. This is the underwater animation of what happens to the Okay, now the desired angle of the rudder is reached. So potentiometer is sending a signal to control box due to which control box has already stopped sending signal to the bidirectional control valve. So bidirectional control valve will go back to its zero displacement position where the, the steering gear goes back into idling mode. Okay, next slide. Now let us assume to move the rudder to hot to starboard. Let me move the wheel. Now the command is given to hot to starboard. Let's see what happened on, on the hydraulic system. As usual, control bug should receive the signal and send it to the bidirectional control valve and the bidirectional control valve moves to the left hand side connecting the pressure line to the purple line and the return line to the green line as you can see purple line is being pressurized and green line is returning the oil due to this pressure difference let's see what happens the rudder turns to hot to starboard and potentiometer has already started sending signal to the control box due to which control box stops sending signal and the bidirectional control valve comes back to zero displacement position again the steering gear goes into idling mode well the next important topic is safematic operation let's go into the next slide okay let us now see the safematic operation. Safematic steering gear, what is it exactly? As per SOLAS, single failure criterion is required for few ships like tankers or ships of different dead weights. Uh, the requirements for a steering gear is dealt in a different video. Please watch it. Okay, any steering gear which is in compliance with the single failure criterion as recommended by SOLAS is called a safematic steering gear. What is a single failure criterion? Let's see. If the main steering gear comprises of two or more identical power units, which is the case in most of the ships these days, then a single failure of either power unit or piping. So, please underline these two words. It's not only the pipeline failure. Even the power unit failures, most of the candidates in oral exams make this mistake. They only say 
it is the hydraulic leak but it is also included in inclu including the power units if there is any issue or uh, if there is one single failure on the power unit or the piping must not impair the integrity of the remaining part of the steering gear okay in, in a steering gear, we do have two pumps, two reservoirs, two uh, electric motor and all that. But this rudder is one, the tiller is one, the rudder stock is one. So what, what is exactly covered in a single failure? Whichever you see as one, which is not more than one. And failures on items that are more than one or part of the single failure criterion so any one single so the word you should understand one or single failure in any of the components which are actually two in numbers or more than two in numbers are counted in single failure criterion so let me put it this way in the event of loss of steering capability due, due to a single failure other than the tiller so come back to this other than so these are not part of single failure concept which are tiller quadrant or component serving the same purpose seizure of the rudder actuators so these four things are not part of single failure concept as per solace so in the event of loss of steering capability due to a single failure the steering capability shall be regained in not less than 45 seconds after the loss of one power actuating system well, there is also a few, few more conditions to be met to be a safe matic steering gear. So in case of such failure, single failure, an audible and visible alarm should be triggered in local station, which is a steering gear room, bridge and the ECR, obviously. And the faulty system has to be isolated automatically. Not that it has to be intervened by a manual operation, but it has to be done automatically. So faulty system should be isolated automatically and the standby system should take over the steering control and all that all the above said even should occur within 45 seconds and the ship should be able to be under steering control well this is called as a single failure criterion and whichever steering gear is in compliance with this is called a safe matic steering gear uh, yes uh, the steering gear has to be certified as safe matic uh, for the purpose of solas well let's let's get into the animation and simulate a so as you see on the screen now the steering gear is in normal operation let's simulate a leak say there is a leak on the green line as you can see on the screen due to which the level in the reservoir has gone down to low level now okay it is in low level so this is the point the alarm should be triggered and the next step is further leaks and the level goes to low low at this point the pump should stop and the bypass valve as you can see on the screen should open so unit number i mean cylinder number one and cylinder number two are bypassed which is not obstructing the movement of the rudder stock now unit number two should take over before that auto isolation valve should be closed as you can see on the screen they just closed now this separates unit number one and unit number two now unit number two has taken over the steering operation and let's go to the next step the servo pump is closing the bypass valve and cylinder number three and four is ready to take the rudder orders from the helm this is called a single failure criterion and that concludes our video of a four ram electro hydraulic steering gear Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, corrections, or if I missed out anything, or if I was wrong at any point, please feel free and post it as your comments. Thank you for watching.